we start with a case that's chilling. Somewhere, probably in the English Midlands, there's a killer on the loose. And someone must know who he is. The police and a grieving family need your help. As you're about to see, the nature of the killing leads to the fear that he might well strike again. It's a macabre story made even more bizarre by this letter that was sent to the police by a man who claims to be the murderer. Do you recognise the style? It may have been written with a ruler and a mapping pen, and look in particular at those peculiar S's that are written in the form of exclamation marks. It's a bit like some computer shorthand. Now, the letter could be a decoy, it could be a hoax, but if you know who wrote it, you could save someone's life. In the reconstruction that follows, every detail is as exact as we can make it. The real locations and the actual vehicle the killer drove. The outskirts of the village of Keyworth near Nottingham on Halloween last year. Monday, October the 31st. At nine o'clock in the morning, a body was found by a passerby. A young girl had been strangled and raped with particular brutality. Colette Aram, a trainee hairdresser, was 16 years old. The previous evening, she'd set out to walk to the home of her boyfriend. She never got there. This bizarre letter was received by the police two weeks later. The details in it suggest it's genuine and possibly written by someone with local knowledge. Is somebody protecting this man? Superintendent Bob Davy heads the inquiry team. Today, seven months and 2,000 statements later, they still haven't found the killer. And without your help, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack, a man who's white, aged roughly 25 to 35, with probably brown, wavy hair. So what the hell do we know about him? He's not going to sit in his house with the word murderer written across his chest or across his back, is he? Uh, he's got some sort of sexual hang-up. He likes young kids. It's not going to be ever so obvious when you go through the door. But talk to the people, talk to the wives. Let's find him, because he's about somewhere. Colette's left in a field, don't forget that. We're dealing with an actual a savage killing. Let's sniff him out and let's see if we can find him. The police have built up a picture of the killer's movements from the letter and from corroborating evidence. It starts at a riding stables five miles from Keyworth. I was in a hut for hours waiting for a girl to return from horse riding. No one saw me. Yet the police are almost certain that the killer hid here while girls were riding near the hut. There are forensic clues in particular, a rag stained with human semen. And at about 4.30, something happened here that was to set off a fateful chain of events. When the car came with keys, I could not help take it. The next time the stolen red Fiesta was definitely sighted was shortly after five on an estate in Keyworth. The witness, a local resident, noted that the car was probably parked there for about an hour and they were able to give a description of the driver. Did he visit a friend or, if he actually lives locally, did he simply go home for tea? Then, early on that Sunday evening, in the hour between 6.20 and 7.20, the suspect is known to have cruised the neighbourhood, trying to pick up young girls. One of them had a very close encounter. She's exercising the dog at the time. He stops uh, and he makes some pretense of asking her 
the way to Walls Drive. Now that was clearly a bit of a ruse on his part because Walls Drive in actual fact was only 50 yards away and he, he probably just passed it. Yeah, look, come here. Can you tell me where Wold's Drive is, please? You just come out of it. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, uh, where are you going, anyway? Nowhere. Do you want a lift? No. Oh, come on, it's, it's warm in here. It's, it's dry. I'll take you wherever you want to go. No, thanks. <laughs> well, what are you scared of? I'm not going to bite you. Come on. Come on, where do you want to go? I'll take you. This cruising is the kind of habit that he may well be repeating in other parts of the country. Has anyone tried to pick you up in this way? No one knows what I look like. That is why you have not got me. In fact, they do have various descriptions. He was seen yet again at about eight o'clock by another important and a particularly observant witness. the car there he walked around the corner and then he came back and he made some comment about uh, somebody not being in as if it was a reference to having visited some house well he couldn't have done that because in actual fact there was no houses in that vicinity the witnesses suspicions were already aroused when he noticed what was being carried no one knows what the knife was used for but the witness prudently took a note of the car's registration number. Colette Aram took her last walk up this hill. She left home at eight o'clock on her way to see her boyfriend just 20 minutes away. What happened then must be speculation, but one further witness, a local resident, did provide a vital piece of information. I know I strangled her when a car passed. She would have got me caught. But she was not dead when I left her. Maybe the cold killed her. Cars passed when we were there. I thought she would be all right. We're talking about Colette probably being abducted and murdered at about 8.15 on that Sunday night. At 9 o'clock that night, there's a man of the, of the description of the man we're looking for goes into the Generous Britain pub at Costol. What can I get you? Uh, a pint of orange on the please. And uh, can I have one of those ham cobs as well? If we accept it's the man that went in the pub, and I think we do, is a man that, if you remember, he drank a pint of orange and lemon. Now, that's an unusual drink. It is in our circles. We, we're pints of bitter men. Ham, he said. Ham. Uh, yes, please, yeah. On holiday, are you? 
No, uh, actually, I, I took the wrong turning off the motorway. Uh, no, actually, I've uh, come up to visit a friend who lives in Barton. Oh, 91p, please. His stories prove to be false, but they do suggest a degree of local knowledge. He works in the power station, but he's had a bit of an accident, so I was going to visit him in hospital. We searched and we checked in the toilets and we took possession of some of the tissues. One of the tissues was sent, to, in fact, all of them were sent off to the forensic and they found signs of blood and also human semen. I go soon and then you will never get me. Well, the man who's determined to get him who's in charge of the case is Detective Superintendent Bob Davy. First of all, Superintendent, how much credence do you put in this weird letter? Well, one's got to be open-minded about letters like this uh, from previous experiences we've had. But there are certain aspects of this letter which make us think that it probably is genuine. Uh, that is, from the, from the man who murdered Colette. Now, what about the description of the killer? Obviously, the man we used was an actor and people mustn't think too much about that description. How much do we know about the killer? Well, I shouldn't want that to mislead people, but, but we're looking for someone 25 to 35 years uh, of average height, probably light brown hair, uh, and we know from a number of witnesses that he was wearing this brown suede or imitation suede three-quarter length coat. Was he clean shaven or did he have a bit? Well, of course, he could grow a beard or cut one off since. Do, well, we, do we know? Well, that's right. Uh, and in fact, uh, a number of witnesses in this case uh, have given varying descriptions. Uh, but we want to be open minded about this, and, and we feel that at this stage he's probably um, clean shaven. And do you think that somebody out there knows or might know who the killer is? Might have a good suspicion? Well, we think so. We, we think that the man's got local knowledge. We think he probably lived locally at that time. Uh, and we're looking for someone who was away from his home um, between 4.30 that day when the car was stolen and until about 10 o'clock that night when we know the car was brought back or was seen coming back into Keyworth. Now, this horrible behaviour that we saw, the cruising around, trying to pick up young, young girls, he might presumably be doing that somewhere else. Well, this is... A possibility. In fact, this is quite a likely possibility, bearing in mind his behaviour on this night. I mean, we've evidence from witnesses that, in fact, he was uh, following young girls uh, and cruising the area. I would think that that behaviour is probably still continuing. So, if this happens to, to any other young girls, you want them to report it, wherever it is they live? Oh, yes. Uh, if anyone's uh, been approached in this way or seen anyone behaving in this manner, if they let us know, we'd be grateful. Is there anything else that we should know? Have you had any other information? Um, well, we, we've had a lot of information on the case, but we, there's, there's a, a woman that rang in. She rang the local evening newspaper uh, and, and she rang one of our police stations. She was distressed. She was anonymous. Uh, she said that she knew who had murdered Colette uh, and then she broke down and she put the phone down on both occasions. She knew who the murderer was and she hasn't rung back? Well, this is what she said. Uh, it may be, of course, that she, she doesn't know, but she thinks she knows. We'd like that woman to come forward and, and contact us again. Uh, we'll treat whatever she says in confidence. Right, so you want her to ring in at anybody who thinks that they have suspicions about somebody who might have been in the area at the time, and the description is a fairly broad one. Yes, somebody between their mid-twenties and their mid-thirties. That's right, that's right, and I certainly wouldn't want people to take too much notice of the actor or, or the descriptions that we've shown. Right, Superintendent, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.